Morning everyone. So here we are, 2021, the first video of the new year. It's been uh, been a bit of a while. I've been away at work for the last three months uh, due to all the COVID restrictions and travelling and quarantine. All the rotations have been extended. Uh, so here we are, start of February and uh, been home the last couple of days and uh, all the stuff that I bought uh, was on back order. It started to arrive over the, the Christmas period while I was away. So uh, the first thing we're going to get into today is going to be the new telescope. So I've, uh, I've purchased uh, this RASA 11 inch and uh, it will complement my one that I bought uh, last year which was the Edge 11. Uh, the Edge 11 is obviously the, the deep space uh, 200, uh, 2800 millimeter focal length whereas the RASA is more a wide field uh, scope with a, a 620mm focal length. However, it is a very fast scope, optically fast scope. Uh, the Edge 11 is an F10 and uh, the RASA is an F2.2. So here's its usual box that they come in, probably Celestron's typical double box. Uh, I don't know what the couriers have done with it, but it's got lots of little holes in it, and uh, particularly We've ended up with a massive hole through both double layers, but I don't feel any damage uh, on the inside. Uh, and so the plastic around the scope itself doesn't appear to be torn or any scratches or any marks in there. But we'll, we'll see what it's like when we open it up. So let's get into this. So it's quite a large box. It's a large scope. I think it's 820mm uh, scope. A 840 millimeter, sorry. And the box itself probably weighs around 25 kilos. And I think the telescope, the telescope itself, the tube assembly, is, uh, is a 20 kilo. So I'll be using this with the Celestron CGX mount, which has a payload capacity of 55 pounds. And the 20 kilos plus the, uh, the camera uh, will probably take us up to uh, round about the high 40s, 40 pound mark. So it's still within the, the technical limit of the CGX. So as we say, double box. So there she is. Get the plastic off. So we're going to rest her. Isn't a isn't for visual uh, viewing. It is purely dedicated as a uh, astrophotography device. 
So unlike the Edge 11, the Rasa has no connection with the rear cell for the uh, any eyepieces or anything like that. The what we have instead is a connection for the camera on the front of the scope. So you wouldn't want anything too large uh, obstructing the main uh, objective. So we've got double dovetail, uh, the lost Monday rails top and bottom. Uh, at the rear, carrying handle, and we've got the focusing air adjustment, and we've got this uh, connection here, which is for a fan, a uh, fan power supply. Uh, the fan helps to stabilise uh, the air uh, inside the, the tube and uh, bring down the temperature equalisation between outside and inside as quicker as possible and maintain that stability, which will help uh, with focusing uh, or maintaining focus, or should in theory, I believe. So there's nothing else, no attachments for any uh, eyepieces. As I say, it's uh, for photography use only. Uh, there's no um, mirror locks like there is on the edge. Uh, let's turn around. Oh, that's a heavy beast. Okay, so if I take the cover off, and there we can see front end of the edge, so uh, sorry, of the, of the Rasa. So Rasa uh, is Ruhl Ackerman Schmidt astro Astrograph and the difference between this uh, and your other scopes, so with the Newtonian, uh, the light comes down the front, bounces off a reflector, bounces off a secondary reflector and comes out the side and on the, the SCTs, the Schmitts, the Schmidt Cassegrains, the light comes in the front, bounces off the primary mirror, bounces off a secondary mirror, and then gets uh, uh, leaves the scope at the rear. With the astrograph, the light comes in the front, simply bounces off uh, the rear mirror and primary mirror, and then goes through uh, a set of uh, optical uh, lenses at the front, uh, and this is for doing all the flat field correction, etc. And then as it comes out uh, the front here uh, of the of the rasa, so there's really not a lot to it. In the front of the scope, we also have this uh, window. This is a removable glass uh, lens. Uh, the front here, uh, it's a filter bay, so you can put like pollution filters uh, inside this uh, and leave them permanently connected should you desire. Uh, if you're in that uh, in a neighbourhood with a uh, high bottle. And in the box, we should have uh, camera connectors. So we've got a couple, a couple of knobs for screwing onto the bottom uh, of the dovetail uh, to stop her sliding out of your mount. We've got a little battery pack uh, for connecting uh, to the fan if you don't have a uh, 12 volt supply. It uses the standard uh, connectors. Uh, this battery pack. Uh, takes eight double A's. So I don't suspect that the uh, the fan will draw much power. And then in here we have got the camera adapter plates. I can get it to them. We've got a couple of different sizes. We've got a narrow and a, a wide uh, connector. I'm not sure, I think it's uh, M42 and an M54, uh, I think they are. And I dare say it's written somewhere in the instructions, but anyway, that will allow you to connect. Uh, on to uh, the front of the scope with the types of camera that you've got and we simply put uh, 
put the, the adapter into the ring and then we can screw it onto the front of the camera and then the side of So with the, the adapter in place uh, the, cam the telescope's back focal distance is your standard 55mm from the front of the plate so this makes it a lot easier for setting up uh, the likes of the ZWO cameras uh, who come, which come with uh, suitable adapters to take the focal, the back focal length uh, up to the 55 millimeters. And uh, I've got all that with the ZWO 2600 uh, that I'll be using uh, with this uh, to begin with. So really, that is about it. Let's get alongside the. So as I say, it's uh, 600 mm focal length. And the tube itself is 840 mm wide, eh, sorry, long, and 315 mm in diameter, I think. It's 11 inch optics. And let's turn around the other way, in fact. I hope she doesn't fall off. And here, for comparison, is my Edge 11. Um, in front of it, I have got uh, my Star Sense Auto Line Finder Scope and a Guide Scope. But uh, there you have it. There is the Rasa and the Edge side by side. So in the, in the future videos, uh, I've got other uh, unboxing things to do. Uh, if you want to see the unboxing of the Edge 11, you'll find that. I'll put a link up in the corner. And I'll also be creating another video shortly uh, where I'll set up the, um, the camera on the front. Uh, put it in, our, in the mount. And I've also got coming up uh, off-axis guiding set up for the Edge 11. I decided to, to give that a go this year and see if we can improve the guiding quality with the, with the edge. So, that's it for the RASA. Thank you very much for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, thank you for all the, the subscribers I've had since I started the channel at the back end of September last year. I think I broke the 100 mark at Christmas. And uh, yesterday, I think when I checked, and there was 100 and over 150 now, so uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll see you in the next video.